Durham's batting woes continue as Gloucestershire close in on victory. Day one was dominated by the ball at the Riverside, with Durham's fragile batting lineup collapsing to 158 all out. Before Matt Salisbury led a fight back with three wickets, as Gloucestershire struggled to 102 for five at the close. Not out batsmen Benny Howell and Josh Shaw started day two in confident move for the visitors, and Howell had moved on to 27 when he was the first dismissal of the day, caught by Bancroft off rain. And the deficit was 25 when they lost another wicket. Higgins removed by Rushworth for three. And Durham had the prospect of a first innings lead on a pitch that was still offering plenty of movement for the Seamers. Shaw hit four boundaries in his 18 before he was bowled by Rushworth. And the visitors were still in arrears when Van Buren was caught behind off cars after hitting 17 from 19 balls. The last wicket pair of Payne and Taylor edged Gloucester in front, but only by 16 before Eckersley took another catch behind the wicket, Payne out for seven. The last five wickets had fallen for 72 runs and the match looked unlikely to last much beyond day two. The Durham bowlers had shared out the wickets and nobody had yet made a 50. Alex Lees certainly couldn't change that when Durham batted again. LBW first ball to Payne to continue his horrible run of form. Ryan Pringle went on the attack as the home side wiped out their arrears, but after hitting six fours in his 30, he was caught by Payne offshore to bring about lunch. Durham 39 for two, a lead of 23 with skipper Bancroft still there on eight. But the Australian would need someone to stay with him and that wouldn't be Gareth Hart who fell LBW to Shaw soon after the interval to complete a pair in the match. Next ball, Shaw bowled Burnham. He couldn't complete his hat-trick, but Durham were in trouble again at 43 for four, just 27 ahead. But Bancroft did then find a partner who could hold up the other end in Liam Travaskis, and while it was slow going, the pair added very useful runs. Bancroft was very much the senior partner, hitting five boundaries in his 40, as the pair added 48 for the fifth wicket. But with T approaching, he was run out by Van Buren and Durham's lead was still only 75. And it was only 81 when Travaskis followed his partner back to the pavilion, edging Payne behind for 21. Eckersley and Rain got the home side through to T with no further mishaps, but at 111 for six, their lead in the match still hadn't reached three figures. They'd only just passed that landmark in the evening session when they were seven down. Rain caught behind off Taylor for seven. And after that, the inning subsided in an all too familiar Durham collapse. Higgins had cars caught behind for eight, the first of three wickets to fall in as many overs. Salisbury was bowled by Taylor for a second ball duck. And when Eckersley's resistance was ended by Higgins, caught by Howell for 21, Durham were 132 all out. A total of just 290 runs scored in two innings. Gloucestershire needed just 117 to condemn the home side to their fourth straight defeat. Openers Dent and Hammond set about the task in steady fashion, posting 60 for the first wicket in 20 overs. Dent was caught behind off Salisbury for 29, but that was surely only a minor delay before their first championship win of the summer. At 64 for one at the close, with Hammond 30 not out, Gloucestershire need just 53 more on the third morning to deepen Durham's gloomy start to the season.